Hello and welcome or welcome back to the channel. Today's video is Colour Along in the wonderful Matchstick Mouse Winter by Morgan O'Brien. Thought we'd have a fun cute page for the cold months to work in and I know these are quite a popular book series. I've taken my inspiration from a couple of Colour Cube palettes by Sarah Renee Clark. Um, these come from volume 2 I believe with them being the later numbers. And we're going to get right into it. We're going to lay a alcohol marker base down. I'm using Ohuhu markers and you will find the colours that I've used in the description box of the video. Of course, as always, it doesn't really matter. You can use whatever colour you want. You can colour along. You can change whatever you like. But if you do want to use the same um, markers as me, it is in the description box for you. This is an unusual colour choice for this little guy, I know. And if you would prefer him to appear more brown, use the same colours that I used for the bigger Matchstick Mouse. Um, it's totally up to you. So the brown marker I've used here for everything else apart from him is uh, YR9 Yellow Ochre. So... Like I say, it's uh, it's completely up to you. I did slightly regret the orange base coat that I laid for him. I've done it now, so you know I will see it through. But maybe um, if I had to do it all over again, I may have just used this nice dark brown for both. And if you've seen my completed pages video with these in, you will notice that in all of the later pages that I did, I did change him to the darker brown. So all the pencils for them are the same. It was just that base coat that I used. Um, so yeah, maybe consider the darker brown if you prefer. Guys, you might prefer it in the end. And it's just about laying all the base down. You know, don't forget I've got my piece of paper behind there so it's not going to ruin the page behind. The thing with the alcohol markers is to work quickly and efficiently line by line so you don't get smudges or smears and to leave a tiny little bit of space around the edge of your colouring so that when that marker bleeds out a tiny bit it's not going to extend past your lines. So you almost colour with a tiny little space between your black outline and your marker. Uh, especially on the Amazon print paper, you will get a little bit of <laughs> spreading of alcohol markers. Uh, there's just not really any way around that. And we uh, we learn to adapt and survive. I'm sorry for my voice, guys. I have, of course, waited to do this um, voiceover until I am in the midst of some kind of <coughs> cold and sinusitis attack. So... Um, I sound very nasally at the moment. We're moving on to the blue that I've used for a lot of their accessories. This is an Ohuhu marker in PB3 Cobalt Blue. And I'm going to do their hats, their scarves. And I do believe I've used this on both of my mouse because I just, I did like the colour. And as you can see on the right hand side, I'm just sticking to this quite blue colour palette of accessories that I've chosen. Uh, originally I used two different markers but they were so close. So close in colour that um, it really didn't make any difference. So I would just recommend the PB3 Cobalt Blue for everything. Because um, they're going to look exactly the same when we're finished. There's no colour difference really in that at all. Okay, we're moving on to the background. We're going to start laying down some of these trees now. I'm using the 
uh, lighter green first, the Ohuhu G270 Moss. I'm going to do the two trees either side to make them look like they're further into the foreground. And then I opted to do that middle tree in the back in a darker green base so that it looks like it's close, uh, further away from the camera. Um, I did eventually decide that that little piece of ground underneath their feet in the middle there is going to be, you know, grass that the snow hasn't covered. So that's what we went with because that's kind of what it looked like to me. It's one of those things where you've just sometimes you've got to take liberties and decide what you think your page is going to look like um, and pick what you your thought patterns are so to me that looked like it was exposed grass and uh, I went with it I went with it we're now moving into the darker green uh, the Ohuhu G7 chromium oxide green I'm going to do that tree in the back there and just by making it a bit darker it just gives it distance it makes it look you know a little bit unique a little bit separate and i like it's the same tree but further back so you're not seeing the color variance as much just adds it into shadow and immediately pushes it into the back of the page for yourself i just thought it gave quite a nice cylindrical effect to match the shape of this page Go back to the original grain and we'll do this big guy on the right hand side. I'm just obviously also avoiding those lumps of snow on the tree there. Make it easier to deal with later if I'm not having to colour up the grain. You will notice me on my page avoiding all the little snowdrops as well. Uh, it doesn't make it easier, but <laughs> it's you could always just colour those with a white gel pen over the top later to avoid all the hassle, but I figured I'll just colour around them. It wasn't too difficult to do in the end. And uh, as with most artworks, you get to kind of a point where it's it's a little bit of uh, adding and changing this tree just kind of disappeared a little bit in the bottom to me it just kind of stopped and wasn't finished so i've just padded it out and just continued it like it comes down to the ground we're now doing the gray on the left hand side there looked to be a little stone archway to me i went with it being a little bit of a bridge um, so I've got Ohuhu GG110 Toner Grey for this one. Um, it was a very dark grey in the end, but it worked for what I wanted to do. So I've just popped a little bit of that into the back. Okay, so continuing on, we are going to do kind of, you know, the inside of the ears and the tails. And for this, I use the Artex R26, not Artex, Ohuhu R26 honey uh, again i tried to pick something that went along with that right hand side palette sticking with the color options that i'd chosen and then we have decisions so i have decided to go with the artex colored pencils um and again i will pop all the color choices in the description box down below for you for the um for either one of the green alcohol bases um it's the same colored pencil combo over the top so in the artex we have s426 fern green uh five sorry 5426 fern green 5099 apple green and 5088 lime peel and it's the same color combo over either base it just obviously gives a much darker effect over that darker green alcohol marker and now we're getting into some coloring some shading some highlighting i'm just going to add the darker green all the way around the right hand side outside edge of that area that's going to give the effect of the snow casting a little bit of shadow above 
we're going to do the same effect underneath this mouse here so i'm going to color a nice dark green patch just underneath where he sits to give the illusion of that shadow there as well and we're just going to make it very vaguely mouse shaped so i'm just coming away a little bit to give the effect of feet so it's not right underneath him and then just a, an image of a body there we're then going to take our next screen and we're just going to work that out a little bit. So we're just working out a little bit in towards the middle. We're fading all that out as always and just loosely adding some more green to this patch. Just toning that darker green in and blending that out. You really do want to avoid your harsh lines for anywhere but where his shadow is. Her shadow, should I say? Is it a her matchstick mouse? Um, and then finally, with that lime peel colour, I'm just going to add a little bit of that paler grain. I'm leaving a little bit of the marker base showing through for that fourth colour because uh, I just don't mind the look of that. So we're just adding this in to the area just to give different tones to the grain, make it look a little bit more natural, a little bit more like grass. And uh, as soon as you start to lay pencils down on your page, you start to see things come into life. We'll work on these trees in the background now. I'm just going to add some shadow underneath each section of fern there. So just underneath where each section would come out, we're going to add a little bit of darkness. And uh, just to create the illusion of some dimension here. I'm going up and down the same way as the tree would come out. A little bit of shadow underneath that snow. And then again, we're just going to work downwards through our colour shades, blend and adjust and fade things in. And we're just giving a mottled look to these trees. Nice and simple. Build it up where you need. And there you go. Very easy. You'll see that bottom right piece of that tree there. I've just taken the liberties of kind of extending the picture to uh, where that tree just disappeared into the background. We're going to do the same thing again with this monster over here. Um, it turned out a little bit of an odd shape because I just kind of did extend it more bottom less left than I did bottom right um but you know you could I could have shortened it before the bottom of the tree line I did a, a chunk to the tree but I just didn't want to add that much complexity of extras to the page and figured you know you're not going to notice it enough for it to really be an issue so I'm just going to add some interest to this tree we're going to add the image of branches and bows and depth we're going to add shadow underneath where he's colored well drawn should I say drawn these outlines and uh, we're just going to start to pad this tree in we're going in the direction that the branches would go just to make it look a little bit more realistic this is a cartoony page so you don't have to go too crazy with adding in tiny details. We're just giving the illusion of not one flat green in the back there. Add your bits and pieces wherever you think. And as you go along, you'll add more as you want to. You can see it's starting to come to life a little bit there now. We're going to go in with the mid green. I'm going to give it some more colour tones, add some different greens in. You could even throw a brown in there if you really want to get technical with it and live the high life. It's always weird to watch yourself colour in high speed. Um, I wish I coloured this fast. <laughs> You can, of course, pause the video at any time to uh, work on what you're working on and come back as you go. 
It's just about keeping on adding your dock back in, building up more as you need it, and just adding those layers in and spreading them out as you decide you need more of that darkness, more depth, more dark green, and you'll see me just keep working it in, kind of almost expanding it out each time. And uh, eventually it just starts to look a little bit more like greenery instead of stripes. And we will get there in the end, I promise you. Uh, I can only apologise for my camera jumping. I have got a floor mounted stand now, uh, thinking I'd solved all my wobbling problems, but now my dogs like to walk past it, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, moving the camera arm is the new game, so it will happen a few times in the video, I'm afraid. So we're getting to the point now where, you know, I'm kind of happy with the shape I've created. We're looking almost fern-like. So we're going to just nice and easily add a little bit into this back one. It's a little bit darker, so there's a bit less work to it. We're just going to chuck down some shadow, give it a little bit of the idea of branches there just popping bits of green randomly almost and of course some shade underneath that snow and that will just give a tiny bit of life to this guy in the back I did add a little bit of medium green as well. The beauty with pencils over alcohol markers is you can add lighter colours over the top and they are going to change the texture and tone. Finishing it off with a little bit of the pale lime peel there. And there you go. Lots of colour going on. Right, I decided we needed a little bit more to this shadow, I'm just padding that out. Once you start working on a page, you know, you'll start looking at certain things and think that needs a little bit more and just add it as you go. And then we're going to work on these accessories. So I decided to go with the Artex pencils in 4201 Ultramarine, 2035 Cerulean Blue and 2071 Light Aqua, uh, almost a kind of a turquoise -y, teal kind of colour combo in the end to go over that nice dark blue base. Again, we're going to create our shadows, the image of, you know, almost folded fabric there, just by adding that line across the middle of the scarf and then blending it out a little bit. It just adds this image of a fold and a crease. Really simple thing to do. You've got the shadow from his ear, the shadow from the bottom of the cap, and then I'm doing the same thing. I'm just adding that line in across the middle to add the fold to his cap there. We're going to take our medium blue tone, uh, the cerulean blue, and we're going to blend that darker blue out and in a little bit. Get rid of any harsh lines and just work that in a little so it takes up a little bit more of the space
And then with the paler colour, you need to be a little bit careful with this. Light touch, we're just adding some highlights in. I'm not using this to fill everything in. I'm leaving the marker to do that. And we're just adding a tiny bit of highlight, blending it in if need be with the darker blue. And just popping in those touches where the lighter areas would be. Gives it some really beautiful dimension with that kind of teal toned colour. And there you have it, really brings that image to life, makes those areas pop. But it is a contrasting colour, so you just just careful, really light touch, blend it in. And then we'll do this lady here. Same things apply. You want to add your little bit of darkness, your bit of depth around the top of that scarf where it's sitting underneath the face. A bit of shade where the hat is. Again, I'm going to add a little line there just to add a fold to that scarf, a crease. I'm bringing that around the front as well. And bit of depth along the bottom and then for the scarf down the back I'm just going to add my dark blue under that hat and then just along that right hand side edge underneath give that shadow there I'm... the lighting's changed for the time of day I'm trying to correct my exposure there I think I made it worse for a while but it will correct itself later on So we go in with that medium blue again and we just blend that in, reduce the harshness of that deeper blue. Nice and careful again, highlights go across the top of those folds, tiny little bit. Just rubbing that in a little with my finger. And across the back there. I did go a little bit ham, just reducing that down. Looked a bit crazy once I'd done it. There we go. And then our hat underneath the brim is going to be nice and dark in there. Going in with our dark blue. Going to leave a little bit in the bottom where it wouldn't be in as much shadow and we're going to work up that seam along the left hand side there a little bit of depth underneath the bobble in the back of the hat I'm just trying to make this object look rounded now give it some shape depth in underneath the ear where the shadow's being cast and along the edge of that hat I'm adding in a shadow from that ear now with that really little details like that they just really give that idea of a 3D look to your page really easy to do but clever to the eye again we're just emphasizing the fold in that fabric and then with our medium blue I'm going to finish off underneath that hat. There's going to be no highlight in there, obviously, because there's no light. And we're just spreading this and blending it out. You can see how immediately that hat has shape and texture and interest. A lot more going on now. Really is the beauty of pencils. And again, I want a little bit just across the top of that brim and across the main of the body. I'm sorry if you can hear nails clipping, clopping on the floor. <laughs> My dog's wandering about. I think he's bored. And uh, there you go. One hat. Again, just go back in with your depth just to tone that down and blend it in a little. Make sure we've not gone crazy with our winter highlight there a 
Apart from my orange mouse, I really do love how this page came out. So, what are we going to do next? We're going to go with the the wood pieces on the page, are we? I think. Did we? Did we do that next? Yes, we did. So I'm very simply just taking a dark brown and the lighter pinky brown tone that I've got and we're just going to add those two tones. One for shadow, one for highlight. Keep it nice and simple. Shadow on the right hand side and underneath. Highlight on the left hand side and above. Um, it's a really nice, easy, quick, simple version for the wood because they're only small bit of shadow under that arm and we were done nice and easy that is the other beauty of an alcohol marker base there's just a lot less work to get those fine details in it will eventually so we're going to add Venetian Red and Dark Salmon and this is going to be all the accents so we're going to use this for ears and tails and mouths. So I'm just going to pop the Venetian Red, the darker tone, underneath along the base of that tail. And we're going to give this ear a little bit of life so we're going to bring it around the outside bottom edge and then I'm just going to add a little bit of a fold into the middle of that ear as well. And then we're just going to blend that out with the paler tone. So just smooth that up and around. You can leave a little bit of blank space where that pale alcohol marker sits. There we go. Simple. I do think I bashed my camera there. Can't even blame the dogs for that one. Okay, so again... We're continuing on with that. Going to bring it out around that bottom edge. I want a little fold into the middle of that ear. So we're just giving it that round shape. Now I'm kind of leaving the highlight pieces around the middle of those ears. Just to give those kind of shape. Ears aren't flat. They kind of bulge out in certain places and uh, that's just giving that effect. I spend way too long on random details. I know, I know. <laughs> I can't help myself. As always, go back in with your darker colour and add that back in place where it's worn down. Nice and gentle. And this time I've used my alcohol ma marker as the highlight part of the piece. So I'm just avoiding those areas to keep them light. And then we'll do her tail. Same again, underneath, we're going to add that little shadowy section, blend it off and out. Bring it up, just a little. And we'll add a bit in the base. Nice and simple. Shadow underneath, light on top. Just going to blend that up and in. Again, you'll see I'm using the alcohol marker as the highlight colour, so I'm leaving a little bit of that paler tone across the top. Just smoothing and blending that out and in. Just to give immediate life to that. Okay, so we're going to start on our orange mouse. We're using the same set of brown pencils 
for this guy and we are the Artex 6191 dark brown 6099 burnt umber 6076 burnt ochre and 5079 ginger root and we're just building in the base of that body with some shadow underneath Um, I think I just left out the dark brown for this section. So I think for the 6191 on this guy, I didn't use. So if you have gone with a brown base, you may want to add the whole colour combo in for him. Make him the same as I will do the mouse on the left. Um, he doesn't look awful when done. I just think I would have preferred him brown. But... You know, we live and learn. Live and learn. <laughs> He's kind of cute in his own way. If he does have a bad tan, he shouldn't be judged for that. Just adding in some face shape. So I'm just adding some brown in underneath the eye there. Give almost a mouse cheekbone to him. A little bit under the nose there for shape. Cross underneath the hat brim there for some shadow and then just down the side of his kind of snout and then with the lighter colour I'm just blending that in and round Really trying to tone down some of that orangey base without success. And I'm just going to add a little bit of a pale brown ochre colour around the outside of that belly just to give him some shade there. And yep, eventually I did go in with the darker brown. This is me deciding I needed more depth and less orange and I did throw the dark brown in there and then we will do our other mouse so we're iron oxide brown golden rod and canary yellow is where I realised I didn't show you the colours for the mouse on the right. But like I said, I would probably stick to the brown tones that I used for the left. So these are dark brown, burnt umber, burnt ochre and ginger root for the mouse on the left hand side. Again, we're just adding our shadows in and some highlight tones just working him up i gave kind of little stripes to him just to look like fur there a little bit some detail to that ear just adding a little bit of depth underneath some highlight on top and a tiny bit along the tip of that ear back in with your shadow and we're just edging everything now and building up some lighter tones I did use quite a dark base for this so a lot of this is now adding in my shadows but then lightening up the rest of the fur 
We're going to go around the bottom of the legs for more depth. Edge underneath any objects. And then with that mid-tone, we're just blending and smoothing that in. Adding some of our raised areas in now. Again, I'm going the way the fur would. And I am just adding slightly some little stripes in there. Just to give a little bit of texture. That flat colour is starting to take shape now. Have a little bit of life. Let's sort out this face. So we're going to come along the bridge of that nose there. Underneath the snout. Along the, underneath the hat. Give ourselves a little bit of a snout. You want to add a little C shape there. Some depth under the face. Give it that round kind of shape. And of course a little bit of darkness under the eye. Work in your next colour. Again, you're trying to go the way the fur would. And I'm not really adding a fur texture, but I kind of am. Leaving the suggestion of one. Just a little. And as always, back in with your dawn colour. You can of course play this video back. If you mute me and reduce the speed. I did it at 2.5 speed. So if you reduce it down, you'll be able to see the colouring in real time. This is why pages take me so long. Okay, so we're now going to work on the archway. Um, and I've got 20% cool grey and 70% cool grey here. And I'm giving kind of, I'm creating little squares with my shadow. So little square outlines to make it look like the stone. And then I'm adding little highlight areas to all those little squares. To give a really fast, quick, easy version of texture. And I did go back in. Simple. There you go. So you can actually see it. I realised at that point it was a little bit dark. We're going to sort out our snow now. I have two snow highlight colours here from the Ortex set. I've got 4140 Wisteria and 2011 Cloud Blue. I decided to go around the base of everything in the Cloud Blue. So I'm giving everything a little bit of shadow underneath. Just really, really light with this. Not adding much colour at all. We want more the idea of a bit of colour just in a few little areas along the base of everything. You can see you can, I'm trying to help you see it by changing the exposure there, but it's just so pale. And then across the top of the objects, I'm adding that bit of purple because I'm extra. You can use just one colour, either or, for this if you prefer. Next section, same again. Very, very light. Bit of blue. You'll notice I'm leaving a gap between my colouring and the black lines. Uh, 
and that will be apparent later. And again, blue across the bottom of everything. We're getting there now. Small details left, bits and pi bits and pieces. Popping that in everywhere. Fade that off so it disappears. You don't want harsh lines for this. Just a suggestion of colour. Don't forget that snow on the bridge there. Same again, a little bit of blue underneath across the bottom of everything. That snorting is my dog, not my cold, by the way. <laughs> He's come to say hello. Well done me for not noticing I'm off screen there. This is the problem the moment I zoom in. I know Winston, it's annoying isn't it? Okay, I'm just adding bits and pieces of touches to the snow above. And just working on the pom-pom. Same rules apply, blue in the bottom of the pom-pom. And purple above everything. So purple across the top of the pom-pom and then across the top of all the snow. Again, it's a really, really fine just suggestion of colour. Don't go crazy. Just add a little bit of purple across the top. Just giving this snow a little bit of colour, a little bit of life so it's not just flat. Really simple and easy to do. Just going across the top of everything there. Turn your page if you need to. Well, this takes longer than I thought, to be honest. <laughs> Don't remember. I obviously spent a bit of time on this. Remembering to get across the top of everywhere. Devil's in the details, I guess. Not sure you have to spend quite so much time on every little bit of snow, to be honest. There we go, there's the pom-pom, purple around. Same thing, a suggestion of colour to it, so it's not just completely white. Realised I hadn't done anything with a belly. Just adding some of that pale uh, ginger root torn around the outside there. Just to give a little bit of suggestion of colour. And to give shape. And 
Okay, we're getting there now. Right, I'm going to go real simple for the background and we're going to use a Thule Art acrylic paint pen in a mid blue. Um, so just pick yourself any kind of acrylic pen in a nice sky blue kind of colour. Um, we're just going to add that into all the background. I had plenty enough going on in my picture that I didn't feel the need for any special extra kind of effort or going crazy with detail in our background if you wanted you could just do this in an alcohol marker or a pencil any of the above it doesn't matter at all I just like acrylic paint sometimes because of the really nice opaque cover that you get And it is quite relaxing, to be honest, to, uh, <laughs> it can be quite zen to uh, paint that up. I have covered the edge lines with that blue, so I have lifted those away so you just see the blue rather than leaving them. And this really is a simple case of colouring in. Leave your snowdrops. Again, where we've kind of taken liberties in those corners, just give it a bit of a fluffy edge. Thought I was done for a moment there. Don't forget under that bridge. Although, in hindsight, technically, you could have done this an extension of that tree. I think I decided in the end my tree was on the bridge, but realistically, that doesn't quite add up to uh, being correct. But I don't think anybody will notice too much when you're done. Missed a bit. Okay, final item we're going to take. In my case, I like to use a white Uniball Signo gel pen and we are going to cover all of our black lines that surround the snow and the baubles on the mouse's clothes. So you're just very slowly going in and melting out all those lines. When you see my pen disappear off page, I am cleaning the end of my ballpoint pen. I find I don't have any problems colouring lines over pencil or anything else, but you do have to keep cleaning the gunk off the end of your gel pen. That is when it starts to stick. And you will see me do that often. I'm lazy, use a tissue, don't use your fingers like me. And you'll see you'll get really nice, neat, crisp cover up. I love the Uniball Signal for this. I've used mine for a long time with no problems. I've had a few of them now and not had any issue. You'll see I'm having a bit of a stick there I just made sure I got all the gunk off my pen and we continue um, this added extra little detail really just finish off the effect of that snow and it's why I kind of left a bit of spacing between my colour 
and my outline so that I wasn't just going to cover everything back up again and so I'm not fighting with pencil with my white pen it does make it trickier sometimes to cover decided to add a few extra bits of white on some of my leaves branches whatever and uh, obviously we're sped up this takes a little bit of time and patience to get everything properly covered but I really do find the effect on the page is worth it just to get rid of those black lines really does make everything look a little bit more realistic It's up to you whether you uh, remove that outside edging line. You might like the idea of the frame. I just felt like it finished it off. This entire video is just going to be two snoring dogs, isn't it? I'm really kind of hoping that you don't hear them as much <laughs> as you probably can. And there we have it. I'm going to finish off that last line along the bottom. And that is the completion of my Magic Mouse page, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this as much as I have. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you got to the end. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up. As always, happy crafting, enjoy, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.